Interfaith Truth Center for our social media guests and family. We're happy to have you here. I'm here with my family today, and I'm happy to see them. We're being socially, we're being socially comfortable today. We're not, I don't use the word distant because, again, distance is an illusion. So I don't care how many laws they tell us that we got to, you know, keep six feet apart. You can be, you can be to the moon and back, but we're still going to be connected. We're still going to be a part of each other. We're part of, we all one. We are all one. So welcome. Glad you're here. So today we're going to be talking about, like I said, we're going to be talking about the oneness of, the oneness, hi, the oneness of God, source, divine, the great spirit of I am. And we're going to talk about, I'm going to kind of stretch you a little bit. I'm going to turn your, wrap you around on little pretzels and bring you back. But I want you to be very open-minded with me today, if you would. I'm going to ask you to be, try to be open-minded. But we had an affirmation today, and I'm sorry that we did not say it, and I'm going to share it with the, the Facebook audience. I am, I, and the Father are one. That's actually a scripture, and that's something that Jesus has said. He, called, he said of himself. And I want you all to say it right now with me, wherever you are. I want you to say, I and Father are one. Say it again. I and Father are one. Once, come on, one more again. I and Father are one. If you're looking for that scripturally, it's in John chapter 10, verse 30. And it is, again, what Jesus said. And, you know, Jesus was an enigma when he was around in his day. He would say all kind of things. And they'd be like, who is he talking to? What's he talking about? So we're going to be kind of look, talking a little, kind of, I'm going to stretch you a little bit today. Like I said, I'm going to stretch you. Because I and Father are one. And this morning, again, I like, I'm going to look at, we're going to look at, what it looks like. I mean, really, really, really what it looks like. I know we say it, we're saying it, we've affirmed it today. You've heard it affirmed before. If you are a Bible student, a Bible studier, you've, you've read Christ Jesus himself saying, saying it numerous times, many, many times throughout his, his journey here with us on earth. So today we're going to be talking about that. We're going to be looking at how we experience God in our lives our relationship with God. And I want you to think about the relationship that you have with each other as well, you know, because again, I and Father are one. You and Father are one. You and Father are one. You and you are fa and Father are one. So that means that if you, if I'm one with Father, one Father, by the way, and you're one with Father, then we must be one. We must all be one. So let's stretch out. Let's stretch our imagination now. We look a little different. I'm tall. And you're short. I'm wearing a little bit. I'm wearing a little bit more than my skinny days, but I'm and she's round. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we look different. We look different. But you know that's a, that's a great. That's an awesome thing. Awesome thing. Right, right. That's an awesome thing about creation. If you look around, take a tree or a couple of trees. No two trees are the same, but they're all part of nature. No two birds that fly in the air are the same, but they're all part of what we call nature. And what you are, what I am, is part, we're created. We're part of creation. And it's only one creation, and there's only one energy that creates, there's only one source that created creation. And it's kind of hard for us as human to put that in a conversation. Because what we want to do is we want to immediately say, he, God, or she, God, if you're a feminist persuasion and you go there. Or we want to call, we want to say Allah, or we want to, we want to have all these different names for the same thing. And then what we do is we get together and we argue my God is this, and your God is that, and your God does this, and your God... But you know what? There's only one creation. Call your God any name you want to call him. Call him book. 
Call him tree. Call him floor. Call him social media. Call him social. Call him whatever. Call, call God whatever. Now, I'm going to be stripping up myself on this, this pronoun because I was taught. I was brought up. I'm that got that cultured mind where I was brought up to refer to God as, an, as, as a thing or a noun or a person. But God is not a man. God is not a person like me. He's not a person like you. He's not a person like you either. No, he's not. Mm -mm. He's the creation himself. He is the sum total of it all. I, I, I think of, if, if, you, if you've ever seen people quilt or, or do quilting, you know how they put the quilts together? They have the little patches and put the quilts together and they have all these little appliques and things that they put on the quilts and everything. But when they get finished with the quilt, it's, a, it's one quilt. And it might have a little piece of baby's diaper, first diaper, or the tooth bag for, you know, grandson over here. Or it might have grandmama's apron, you know, or her apron string, or, or mom's, I don't know, mom's bedspread, a corner of her bed. It could be many pieces of, of just of any and everybody, but it's one quilt when it's done. Well, you know what? Creation started in, as one piece. One piece. Oops, sorry, I'm still here. One piece. <laughs> Start as one piece. And this is my little story. This is a story that I tell, I tell myself sometimes when I'm thinking about it. Because, you know, creation is a mystery. You know, and no, you know, every, I think probably every, um, every ethnic group or every group or every, every person, body, everybody probably have their own unique story about it creation, but I'll tell you what, I'll tell you one that I wasn't taught this in Bible school by the Bible study, by the way. And I am, I am a, I'm a, I'm a Christian. I'm a, I was taught and brought up as a Christian, a Christian faith. And of course I know Genesis and the Bible and Adam and Eve and all that, but this is my story. And I kind of, as I grew up and I started really questioning all those stories and how they interpret them, how they interpreted it. I kind of started thinking, I said, well, you know, it doesn't make sense, you know, but if God is one God and everybody's got their own kind of what's going on here. So my grandma taught, said, showed, showed us this. She taught us this. She said, God was one, one, one lonely creations just floating out in wherever, in, in nothing, I guess. And God decided that he was lonely or God was, God was, had all these facets and all this, it was such a vast energy that there's got to be just more to it than just hanging out. So, phew, creation just decided to blow itself into a zillion, infinite number of pieces. I'm one of those pieces. You're one of those pieces. You're one of those pieces. But you know what? Because that's all there is, and you you're, you're you're still you're still you're not you're still out in the in the in that basin that was holding on holding up that blast that came apart so you're still one you're still one and and you're not gonna you're not gonna and you're, this is all an illusion that that creation decided it was going to do just created this illusion that it was going to separate so it could experience you want to experience you know want to have an experience want to know how chocolate tastes you know, so you gotta have chocolate. You wonder how it feels to be, uh, to walk. So you gotta, you know, you gotta be a man or an animal so you can have that experience. You wanna not know how it feels to love and to receive and, and to get it back. So to, to just to experience creation, here we are, this illusion of separation so that we can have a relationship with CC. I can be friends with CC. I can have, a, I can, I can have children and, ha and have relationship with my family and, and kids. Because if, just, if, if it's just one God just sitting out, just sitting in, his own, in, in its own mass of creation, own energy just there, doing nothing, thinking nothing, having nothing, just, to, just aware that it is, hmm, so, so creation decided to let's a, let's have it let's have an experience. So that's what I want. I want you to think about that today. I want you to think about one source, one source. And I don't want you to think about that source as a noun, and a noun is a person, a place, or a thing. I don't want you to think of that. And if I slip up and I say he, 
just remember I was brought up in Bible study, in school, and that's what they taught me. They taught me that God lived in the sky and that when I die, I'm going to go to heaven and if I, if I be good. And if I be bad, I'm going to go to hell if I be bad. You know, they taught us all of that. And, and, and I grew up, you know, with that. So it's going to be, you know, and I'm, I'm, you know, I've been around a while. So it took me a long while to really get that sunk into my subconscious, into my me, myself. That it's, sometimes it's hard for me to, it's, really, it's a difficult, it's a challenge for me to push that illusion or that fossil that it's just not true aside to really understand that, the, that God is the total of everything. God, I mean, and when I say total, I do mean that God is every, at every spectrum of the, of the scale from one pole to the other, from the good pole to the bad pole, from the low to the high. God is all of that. It's going to kind of, again, stretch in your, how in the world is that? I lose a lot of people with this talk, by the way. <laughs> but I hope you hang in there. I'm going to record this. I'm going to play it again. I want you to do that, too. So, but, um, so he's the to sum total. Again, here I go. He, creation, source, is the sum total of absolutely everything. Nothing is apart, is set apart or separate from the whole, the one. Nothing. And we do, we, we, we do that because in order for us to have the relationship, we have to, we have to separate in our minds. But in, in our being, we, we hopefully will come to understand that it is just an illusion. It is just something that, I mean, our, our, the, the life-giving source that's in us is, the, is that oneness of God. That oneness of source is that source. Without it, we would just be an empty shell. I wouldn't be standing here, by the way. I would be off in, I don't know, some other dimension maybe. But because I want to have a relationship, I want to have an experience, I decided, I decided that I'm going to come to this dimension and I'm going, to be a, I'm going to be a woman, and I had all these things that I'm going to do, and that little, little book that I ticked off, and I've, I've gotten quite a few things done, by the way. I'm a mom. I'm a grandma. I've, I was a student. I was a baby. I was a wife. I was a friend. I was an employee. I'm a speaker. I'm a teacher. I've been all those things because I wanted to have those experiences. I'm not done. I'm still here, so I got some other things I'm going to tick off my box before... I leave this dimension and or this life and I don't know what's going to happen next. I, I don't know. But anyway, but the, that life in me made that decision. That God, that source, that piece of that source that's in me made that decision to incarnate here on this space, in this place and time, to have an experience with all of you. And I've manifested all of you. You've manifested me. And what we're doing is we've manifested, we decided that we want to have an experience. Well, I want to get to know this person named whatever, Jean, or CC, Rebecca. I want to get to know a person named Elizabeth. I want to, I want to, I want to experience her as a, a Reiki master. And I want, to have, I want to have conversations with her, and I want to have connections and relationships with her so that I can grow and tick off, you know, check off my box of my, my, uh, my, my purpose and why I'm here box, if you would, so, so I, until I'm done. Everybody that you experience, everybody that you come in contact with, you've made a decision to have that, that relationship. You made a decision to have that kind. Not you, the person. Not you, the physical human being. That life, that source part of you. That source part of you that lives on after you're done with this earth suit. After I'm done with this jean suit that I'm wearing. I may incarnate, I don't know, into something else, I don't know. But that's what we are. That's what, that's what we are as, as source. We have that opportunity to do that. To incarnate is what they call it. Incarnate is coming into another form, life form, and, and having experience and having connections and having relationships and having whatever. I don't know. Whatever you want to have. But again, source is not a noun today. Source is not a he in the sky that's sitting, up on a, sitting in a throne, on a throne waiting, you know, with angels around about him, no, that is not the, that's not the source that I'm talking about. I'm talking about the source called energy, the source that gives you that life, 
that source is going to live forever, never, ever, ever going to die. Didn't have a beginning, really, because you create, you you create, you're part of that source, and you're not going to have an end. You're just going to go on forever and ever. And I don't know how it's going to. I don't know what forever and ever looks like yet. As a man, I don't know. I, could, I can't wrap my mind around that. Like sometimes I can't wrap my mind around talking about God as a action, as a as an action being, as a I don't even know. There's no definition really. If we were really honest about it, that's the mystery of God because there's no definition. There's no part of the speech that we can use to, to talk about God, the source, the totality of everything, the all. I call it the God, the all. But what I want you to do today, I want, to, I want you to think about this in, in, in terms of God because I want you to, again, I want you to, I want to stretch you a little bit about God and about source and about who you are because that's who you are. You are a pieces, you are, you are God. I tell, my, I tell my students a lot when we're talking, my clients, that, you know, you are God. You are part of, you are source. You, there's no, you, you're a chip off the old block if you want to look at it that way. Your being, that life in you, that life-given life in you is God. I say you go to the, if you go to the sea, if you go to, to an ocean and you take a cup and you dip a cup of water out of that sea or the ocean, it's still ocean water. The being, that life that's in us, that life, that life-giving source, created so creation that's in us is God, is part of that source, a part of that all, that totality. And by being that all, a part, being that all, that source, you have the same exact powers and abilities that you were taught that the man sitting in the sky had. You can create, you can manifest, you can make decisions. You have a free will to make decisions and, and, and dis make deci decide what you want and what you don't want, how you want to live and how you do want to live. You want to be good or you want to be bad. You want to, you know, reach for the heights, the higher self, or if you want to turn your back on the higher self and, 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 and go for the lower self, you have that. You have that ability, you have that power, and you can do it. And a lot of us do. In fact, all of us do. All of us, at some point in time, we get tired of reaching. And we drop that hand and we just get tired. But we have a mind and we have the will and the intuition and the heart and that life giving in us that knows that we can always reach for the heights. There is a higher good. But if there's a higher good, there's also bad. If there is love, there's always there's an opposite of love, and that's fear. But it's all God. And when you think of it in that way, it kind of humbles you a little bit because you think you think about you know people that you would consider bad. <laughs> they just do maybe bad acts, but they're still God. They're still source. They're still source. Source is never going to turn us. Source is going to be source. And that in, we are inherent of the total package. And our, our free will and our choices that we make allows us to choose the good or choose the bad. Because I think that's a, there's a scripture that says, choose today who you serve. You can serve this one or you can serve that one. You got a choice. You can reach for the heights and, and, and go for the higher good, your higher good. Or you can just choose not to. Well, that's why we have, I don't know, criminals. We call them criminals, but you know what? They're still source. They're still source. We can call the worst person that we can think of in terms of their actions, what they choose to do. But they're still source. They're still God. I hope I'm not losing anybody. Because if I am, you're going to have a difficult time with this third piece that I have, because I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about. <laughs> but, but before I go to the third piece, I want to I wanna stretch you some more. I mean, use your imagination. I love playing. I love my clients say you play too many games, Jean. But I love using your imagination. So what I want you to do is I want you to think of yourself as source. I've kind of explained to you what it was. I try to. And now what I, want, what I want you to do is I want you to think, I want you to picture a fishbowl. 
It's filled with water. And there's a cute little fish in that fish bowl. It's just in there, floating around all by himself. That's, that's its world. That's its universe. That's all there is to that fish, is that bowl of water. That's all there is. Now, as far as I know, fish has no conscience. They have no sense of awareness. But let's just pretend, let's just pretend that this fish does have a little awareness about it. And the fish, we're going to say, we're going to say, this intuition. We're going to say to the fish, we're going to say, your God is that water. Water? How does the fish, how is the fish going to comprehend what water is when it's immersed in it? And that's all it knows. How's it going to, what, how, how is it going to comprehend that? That's the dilemma that we face. Because we are, we, we can consider ourselves in this big fishbowl of creation. And we say, describe creation. Describe creator. Describe your creator. I don't know. I just, I'm just in it. You're in it. So it's kind of hard, like that fish, it's kind of hard to, for that fish to tell you where water is and what, it, what it's like. And, and, but it can tell you what it is. One thing it does know, it sustains its life. So one thing we know is our source sustains our life. And you know what? That might be all that matters at this point. Okay. But if it, if it sustains my life, it sustains your life. And it has no preference as to how it sustains. It's just a giver. That force is just there. It's just existing. It's just there. That life force is just there. That energy. Energy makes no differentiation. I'm going to light up the sky today for Rebecca. But you're not getting none of this sun today, Elizabeth. You can't have any either, Scott. No, no sun. You guys, on, uh, you guys on Facebook may as well, you know, sh shut the lights out because you're in the dark today. Can't do that. Rain falls. If you happen to be under this under that cloud, you're gonna get rained on. If you wake up in the morning, you're gonna get the same sunlight and sun energy that I'm gonna get when I wake up. If I'm if I if I have acted on the on the far end of the spectrum, which is way down there, then I might be waking up in solitary somewhere or behind some barbed wire fence or whatever, but you know what? God is still God, and, and I am still got the same sun that you got. I have restricted myself because of choices as to how much liberty I have to use it or have access to it or be a part of it, enjoy it, but it's there. That's God, that's energy, that's light, and that's love. So I'm, I'm going to deviate to love now because I want to talk about that source, that God, that divine, that great spirit of I am, that universe, that source, that love, that love. That's the high ground. That's the, what we reach for. That's the higher self. That's where we get all the positivity, the goodness those wonderful things, the joy, the happiness, the health, the prosperity, the higher ground. But if we turn our backs on that, we choose to, to serve another. Fear. If we choose to serve fear, and we, you choose to serve it. Right. You choose to serve it. You make a choice to serve it. And when you do that, then you have chosen to You've chosen negativity. You've cho chosen lack. You've chosen illness. You've chosen sickness. You've chosen doubt. Lack. Don't try to, don't try to manifest anything unless it's still dark. Unless it's something dark you want to manifest because it's not going to happen. Choices. As long as we are here in this dimension, Earth, we're going to be subject to the polarities of way bad, <laughs> fear, fear, or way good, love, love. 
So how do you experience, have your experience with that love, love, or that fear, fear? Three ways, and I'm gonna rush right through these and I'm gonna be done. But there's three ways that I came up with that. And I, didn't, I won't say I came up with, I, was, I did some research and I thought these were good. So there are three, three things that uh, were nice suggestions and, and you know, because I know we're busy and, and how, do we, how do we, you know, how do we take our time out to really experience the oneness of who we are, the oneness of, of source, the oneness of God, the oneness of each other. How do we do that? How do we have those experiences? Because that's what we came here to do. We came here to do it. Maybe in a certain way. I have certain things I want to do in my way, but I want those experiences. So I want to be able to do it in my everyday life. I want to take love in my everyday life. And if I choose fear, I want to take fear in my everyday I want to have my experiences in my daily walk. How do I do that? In my busy life, I'm a gram, I'm busy. How do I do it? Well, I do it through work. I do it through work. I'm going to have relationship with people that I work with. People are going to be there. My work is going to be there. I'm, I'm, I'm doing some service to with someone, with, with my, you know, whomever my employee is or whatever, I call it my tent making, whatever my profession may be, hopefully we made a choice that it's something that we enjoy doing. So if I enjoy doing it, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to be loving about it. I'm going to be happy about it. I'm going to try to do it to the best of my ability. I'm going to try to do it where it will be to the good, to the higher good, make the best out of it, serve the people that are my clients, my boss, my my co coworkers, and it's not going to always be a bed of roses. It's not going to always be, you know, chummy, chummy, chummy. You know, so everybody's going to have their day, and I'm going to have mine. So there are some days I'm going to falter, but I might just falter. I'm not going to stay there. I'm not going to stay there because I want to reach for the higher good. I want to be happy. I want to be prosperous. I want to make a nice living. I want to make as much money as I can. I want this profession that I'm doing to be of service to man and to be of service to me and my family. So I'm going to love it, give it all my all, do it to the, do it as if I was doing it unto the man in the sky that's sitting on the, on the throne. <laughs> I'm playing with you guys, but I'm going to do it to the best because I want to reach the, reach to the heights. Okay. So work. Another way, my day-to-day -day living, day-to-day, -day, I have an opportunity in my daily walk in life to have a little fun. I have some hobbies. I play a little bit, hang out, go to movies, you know, you know, just have a good time, you know, take off my work clothes and put on some, on some scrubbies or, or shorts and off to the, on my bike or whatever, jump on a horse, whatever. So I'm going to play and I'm going to enjoy whatever I'm doing and every part of what I'm playing with. If I'm out there with the horses, I'm going to love on that horse. I'm going to, I'm going to have a relationship and a connection with that animal and nature and, uh, and my, my playmates, my friends, my family. And I'm going to, again, it's not going to be hunky-dory and everybody's going to be happy all the time and doing the right thing and, you know, not having a bad day. So I might have a bad day every now and then and get mad and say something you know, that's aggravating to somebody and it rubs them the wrong way. But you know what? Guess what? It's allowing us to fine tune that love and those choices that we make. Oh, maybe I should have made a different choice because I want this result. I want, it to ha I want you to be happy. I don't want to make, I don't want my friends to be unhappy or, or, or disappointed or, or sad. I want everybody to be, you know, get along. So then I, I, I learn how, I learn how to love you. And I learn how to receive love from you. Okay? So that's what we're doing. We're reaching, we're reaching for the height of love. Or we're turning our backs on it and we're going the other way. But we are. Because we, we want the bad. We want the good. So we're reaching for the better. And the last one is your communication. Your communication. And I'm going to say with that, higher, with that higher self. With source. Understand that there is communication. And there is a need for communication with source. Recognizing who you are and, re and understanding that there is a language. There's a language that you use, that you, that you, that you understand and you, you cor correlate to, you co correspond to and from. Because you you, you know, you're, you're, you're kind of a dual person because you're observing 
and you're seeing at the same time. You're, you're, you're actually the observer and the, you're both. Okay? So how do you talk to, how do you reach and strive for that higher self? How do you talk to that higher self? How do you communicate with it? How do you express a love to it and appreciation and adoration to it? Or do you fear it? Or do you misunderstand it? Or do you think, think outside of yourself? No. You understand that you are evolving into more, to better and better. Or if you choose the other way, evolving into work, you could evolve the other way too. It's always gonna be polarity in this earth. So as far as bad is from good, it's the same distance that good is from bad. Simple as that. And we are never, ever, ever, don't ever think that we are stagnant and we're stationary in one good spot. I'm in this goodness right here. I might be on this side of goodness, but guess what? I'm going to be back. I'm going to be fluctuating back because I'm, I'm having an experience. And I'm, I'm relating to myself in different ways and realizing myself in different ways. So I'm going to have some bad experiences, not so happy experiences, and I'm gonna have some hopefully blissful experiences. But they're all okay. They're all okay. Don't throw out the baby in the water because you know what? The water's probably, sort of, it's part of the source too. The pan, everything is all source. So don't toss nobody out because they don't act like you want them to act. They will tomorrow, give them another day. Well, give him another minute or two. Yeah. Source is creation, is love, is the spirit of great I am, is God, is Allah, is Buddha, is any name you want to call God. The energy is energy. And it's you, and it's me, and it's Everybody that you can lay eyes on and call another human being, they have inside of them the same source that you have. And they lack nothing or access to no, none of the powers. None of us, none of us are, are, are lacking access to the powers and the abilities that are afforded us as gods. So I'm going to leave you with Creation is love, is source, is God, is divine, is the spirit of the great I am, is you, is me, is all. I'm going to leave you with that, and I love you. I love, love, love you. And I'm glad that uh, you joined us today. And remember... As far as good is from bad, so is bad from good. We're, we're, we're just all here together. All here together. One. One with God. One with one another. I and Father are one. And I'm one with you. And I love you. God bless you. And see you next time.